Even before I saw the viral video of the octopus dreaming, I had been holding a line of poetry in my head. The line is from the poem Deceptions by Philip Larkin, and it goes like this. All the unhurried day, your mind lay open like a drawer of knives. This line had been in my head since September, when I had a conversation with my 22-year-old son about dating and the need for love. Ever since that conversation, the world has seemed to me like a very dangerous place. In the days after I first saw the octopus dreaming, I watched her habitually. Inside of me, the line from Larkin continued to jangle, but with it, I put another idea. And this idea knocked up against the drawer of knives, and it resonated. And the idea is this. Um, it comes from Mr. Coates' book, uh, Between the World and Me. And it suggests that schools teach a false morality in which bodily autonomy is held captive by an idea of social justice that is designed to control rather than to free. This idea is especially important to understand the lives of young black men. It can be hard sometimes to explain how holding two ideas together makes them more revelatory. But for me, watching the octopus dreaming after reading Coates opened something inside of me that allowed me to see something about reflective practice that I had not been able to see before. What would happen if, while watching this octopus dreaming and holding inside of itself the transformations of possibility, we had ideas about what it would mean to hold our children safely in the world while we allowed them to see both the sources and the limitations of that safety. It is not a new idea that reflection builds resilience. But what changes if we give our children the tools to frame that reflection by asking what it means to be us in these bodies here and now? It would open the door to really important conversations about respect and consent and autonomy that our students need and that we need in order to be able to inhabit the possibilities that are inside of each of us. On the day that I had the conversation with my son about love, that's my kid, the 15th transgendered person was murdered in Washington, D.C., where my son, who is a trans man, lives. This is what opened the drawer of knives inside of me. The world he lives in is so incredibly dangerous, even as he experiences the romance of youth. A few days after this conversation, a friend recommended between the world and me which is Coates' letter to his son. My friend suggested that reading books about relationships with sons might help me be a better parent. It might help me frame conversations with my son in which we talked about how resilience and living a life of the mind requires a balance between safety and danger and possibility. And only with balance can you experience the resilience that frees rather than controls. So I have to process that for a second. <laughs> I am not aligning my story or my son's story with Coates' experiences. His words and his experiences are powerfully his own. But I must acknowledge the door that they opened inside of me. In that place, I found a world where we question morality in order to defend it, and where we can have a mind that holds both the drawer of knives and the love required to both pick them up and to put them down. If you haven't had the opportunity yet, you should watch The Octopus Dreaming. When you watch it, you will see her in a world beyond human fear and beyond human limitation, where she is beautiful <laughs> and resilient. And 
I have found that when we open the door to radical morality, beauty will follow, even when what it shows us is terrifying and true. As a parent and as an educator, I believe that we must give our kids the tools to frame reflection in a way that acknowledges that every voice comes from a body that is formed by its experiences. Because this is the way that we give resilience with a voice and a body to live in. Thank you.